Hi there, my name is Josh and thanks for joining me today. I want to talk to you guys about a better way to build computers. Something that is more thermal efficient, as in it can get rid of heat better, it's better laid out, it's cheaper to make, and you can make stuff smaller in it as well. This might sound too, big, too good to be true, but I'm, I swear it's a thing. It's a thing. So, this all starts back in 1995. It was about 24 years ago, the ATX standard was made and published by Intel. ATX stands for Advanced Technology Extension, and it was a specification on how to build computers. This specification applied to motherboards, as in where the pin out, pinouts would be, where the I.O. would be, where the power connectors would be, what kind of power connectors there would be, and how far and how wide the board would go within the case. This would also define where the heat producing components were at, such as the CPU, the North Bridge, and any kind of graphics expansion cards. I want to explain the time frame of when this standard came out, the new one, the revolutionary one I'm going to tell you about. It was back when Vista was coming out, the long-awaited operating system with a revolutionary new world-class UI brought to the home user. It would have a search function, indexes, it would have tons of new new things to make life easier and provide maximum compatibility with backwards programs. Looking at you, Vista. We were transitioning from DDR to DDR2 RAM with faster and more bandwidth to load in programs. There was SATA ports getting on all major motherboards. This would be bring in SATA hard drives and eventually SATA optical drives. And there was also the invention of the faster and more bandwidth heavy PCI Express. Another hugely notable thing and a, a big reason of why we're going to this design here is back in the early 2000s, AMD unveiled its first truly dual core processor to the mass market. Now we could say that IBM made it first, but AMD brought it to the home user. Now I actually had one of these chips. It was a AMD Athlon X2 64, uh, 3800 plus. This was a dual core processor running at two gigahertz. That was fast at the time. Considering that the system shipped with Windows XP, it was more than enough to get the job done. This processor was also really hot and really inefficient at what it did. It had a thermal design point of 89 watts. And the line to follow it that was in the making, Bulldozer by AMD, it was rated at over 100 watts. That's a lot of heat in such a small form factor. There was also that graphics cards were amping up their heat production with multiple cores and more RAM and just more complex circuits. And we also had chipsets that were stuck in between generations. Some of these even had to maintain compatibility with PCI and PCI Express at the same time. They had to deal with floppy disk as well as SATA hard drives. These chips were really inefficient and had to do a lot of different things, which made them produce more heat. The industry as a whole was looking for a hero to save the day. And that hero was the BTX standard, the Balance Technology Extension. This was a new specification on how to arrange the motherboard and the case and the fans and all of that to create a more efficient design. It even gave suggestions on where to put the chipset on the motherboard. All of these led to more efficient and most notably a straight airflow path through the chassis leading to a better power efficient and thermal design. The main early adopters of this standard were Dell and Gateway respectively. These companies had a lot of incentive to buy into the BTX standard. This was due to the cost saving design and the price competitive markets that these companies were in. With better airflow and less complex heat sink design, this led to a case that often only had to use one fan. The design and its adoption were both dropped in 2007. This was due to components becoming more power efficient. Some legacy standards such as ISA and floppy disk were just put to the wayside and processors were made on a smaller manufacturing process which allowed them to be more efficient and either create more clock cycles for the same amount of heat or create less heat for the same amount of clock cycles, which was usually what happens. The BTX design was used in consumer and business class desktops. 
The design can easily be recognized by the rear I.O. being on seemingly the opposite side of the case. Also on the outside, there is a iconic square on the middle of the front of the case. And this was to allow a big, usually 120 millimeter fan to pull in air and push it through the case in an efficient manner. When you pop open the lid, you see a widely different design with hard drives, hard drive bays on the bottom. The BIOS seems to be in its own dark corner, overshadowed by a very large plastic cover shroud for the processor. This was to better allow airflow to push in there and not be kind of spread out in the case. You'll also notice that the heat sinks at this time were massive. They were huge. And right beside the processor is our north bridge and our south bridge at the time. And you will also see that the RAM and the power were on the kind of the top of the board. These boards were also one of the most compatible boards for anything at the time. They would have floppy disk support. They would have IDE support. They would have SATA. They would have PCI. They would have PCI Express. They would have PCI Express X4, X2, X1, and X16. Some of these systems are even still around in the case of the business and the server level environments where systems were made to last. In fact, last year I was able to work on one of these systems. I upgraded it to a Xeon chip. I put in eight gigabytes of RAM and I generally maxed out this system to make sure that it would last as long as possible. It was one of the few survivors though. At this time there was what was called the capacitor plague. It's something that happened between 1999 and 2007, somewhere in there. It was a case of the, the capacitors that shipped on the motherboard, and a capacitor is just an electrical component, one of, the, one of the many on your motherboard. These components would, they would pop, they would leak, they would generally stop working after a few years. This affected a lot of computers at the time, and coincidentally, the capacitor plague ended in 2007, and it makes these computers a rare oddity to see nowadays. In fact, I got a computer in 2005. It was a Gateway Media Center PC. It had a embedded NVIDIA GeForce 6150 SE, and I was able to play Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, the hottest game at the time for its great level of detail graphics implementation on the PC market. Had great open worlds, and, well, yeah, the chip kind of, made the world less open for me. But anyways, I wanted to say that this PC, it worked. And it worked up until 2009 when a capacitor blew on the board. It would no longer post. It could no longer successfully start up and we just had to get a new PC. So rest in peace, Gateway Media Center, 2005 to 2009. Miss you. So I hope this video taught you about the BTX standard, the Balanced Technology Extension. And if you ever, if you guys ever see one of these computers out in the wild, I, I definitely want you to take a look at it, tear it apart. And if you can't find one, just look up some images. You'll see that it was radically different, even though it looked very similar. So thanks for watching. Drop a like, subscribe, have a good day. Get the discussion going. Have you guys had one of these? Okay. Bye.